you're looking at 50% of our electricity. Coal. It's the resource that generates half of our electricity at a third the cost of most other fuels. It's the fuel that powers our way of life. Learn more about America's power at americaspower.org. Coal is an abundant and cheap fuel source embedded in America's history and culture, but it is also among America's dirtiest legacies. Coal-fired power plants in the U.S. are the largest contributor of toxic air pollution and release over 40% of total carbon dioxide emissions, a prime contributor to global warming. In recent years, climate change has caused America's coal industry to come under close scrutiny. An emerging strategy is carbon capture and sequestration technology, a proposed step towards a new, cleaner coal industry. Is this technological fix a viable future for coal in America and an effective solution to climate change? Bob Sussman, environmental lawyer and senior fellow at the Center for American Progress, believes it is. I'm opposed to the building of new coal plants which don't capture and store their CO2 emissions. I do feel that carbon capture and storage has a great deal of promise and needs to be deployed on a high priority basis. What is necessary right now is to demonstrate the technology and to get the data that we need to satisfy ourselves that it's really going to work. Above all, we need to include requirements in carbon legislation which accelerate its deployment. Documentary filmmaker David Novak has taken an in-depth look at the coal industry in the U.S. He is skeptical about the potential of clean coal. Carbon sequestration is about capturing the carbon dioxide as it comes off the smokestack and taking it and putting it underground, under pressure, where it can theoretically stay forever and therefore not enter the atmosphere and contribute to climate change. It is very untried at the scale that we are talking about. And even if it could be done, it would take 30, 40, 50 years to properly develop this technology at a tremendous cost. That cost it's the distraction of where the money can and should be spent in renewable energies that aren't going to release any carbon into the atmosphere or underground. George Monbiot, an international authority on climate change, explains that it's risky to put so much emphasis on unproven technology. In principle, carbon capture and storage could reduce emissions by 80 to 90 percent. So in principle, it could be quite a useful tool for tackling climate change. The trouble is it's a long way off, and these coal mining and coal burning operations are happening right now. While people are talking about carbon capture and storage as something which might happen one day, the coal burning is happening right now. So either we say no coal burning whatsoever, um, which I think is, is actually a sensible policy, and there are many other ways of producing electricity. We don't need to burn coal to do it. Um, it has huge environmental impacts, even if you take uh, climate change out of the equation. Or we say, no coal burning without carbon capture and storage. As we struggle to understand the complexities of climate change solutions, clean coal is emerging as a high-profile strategy. Whether it's ready for the challenge remains unclear.